If you've been told your cataracts are ripe or ready, you're probably starting to think about cataract surgery and what it will entail. When you see your surgeon, you may hear about three different types of implants that you can pick from. And today I'm gonna to tell you about them and go over some pros and cons to help you make an informed decision. Welcome back to eye school with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so that you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Make sure to give a little love tap on that subscribe button down below to stay up to date with all the latest eye tips and tricks I have for you. Cataract surgery is very common. About 4 million Americans undergo cataract surgery every single year. I like to say that some things are inevitable like death, taxes, and cataracts. Briefly, the surgery involves removing your cloudy lens and replacing it with a new implant or what we call an intraocular lens or IOL. What you may not realize is that there's a variety of IOL types to choose from, all with different benefits. The first type of cataract implant is called a monofocal lens. These are designed to provide the best possible vision at one distance. Most people who choose monofocals have their IOLs set for distance vision in both eyes, and they're using reading glasses for near vision tasks up close. Anything arm's length on end, they need a reading glass. The second type of implant is called a toric, and these have extra built-in correction for people with astigmatism. And then finally, we have multifocal lenses, which have corrective zones built into the lens, much like bifocal or trifocal eyeglasses. This allows you to see both near and far objects. Some multifocals may also correct your intermediate vision, and so that can be helpful as well. Next we have, and these I would say fall into that multifocal variety, but extended depth of focus. So extended depth of focus lenses have only one corrective zone, but this zone is stretched to allow distance and intermediate vision. Not so much near in that lens. Then we have accommodative multifocal type, which are also able to correct vision at all distances. The lenses use the natural movements of your eye's muscles to change focus. So how do you decide between those types of lenses? Well, not all IOL types are covered by insurance, but Medicare and most insurance companies do cover the cost of the most common IOL, which is the monofocal lens. These lenses have been used for decades and are the most popular type. Multifocals, extended depth of focus, and accommodative IOLs can reduce the need for glasses or contact lenses, but the ability to read and perform other tasks without glasses varies from person to person. These IOLs are often called premium lenses. They are more expensive than monofocals and are often not fully covered by insurance. So here's some questions to ask yourself before deciding on the right IOL for you. Number one, does your lifestyle rely on near vision? So if you spend a lot of time working at your computer or looking at digital devices, or if you're nearsighted and love to read without glasses on, one option is to set the monofocal IOL for near vision and use glasses for distance vision like watching TV and driving. Alternatively, you might find eyeglasses inconvenient for day-to-day -day wear and want to avoid them altogether. If so, you could opt for monofocal lenses but set one lens for distance vision and the other one for near vision. That technique is called monovision. This choice is not for everyone and I would not recommend doing it unless you've tried it in contact lenses first. For most people, the brain adapts and can use the information from both eyes to provide adequate vision at all distances. If this does sound appealing, contact lenses before surgery are very useful. Another question is, do you drive a lot at night? If night driving in particular is important to you, you might want to steer clear of multifocals or extended depth of focus lenses. These lenses carry side effects like glare or halos around lights or even a loss of contrast. This becomes especially true at night or in dim lighting because your pupil gets bigger letting more of that light in. Most people do adapt to these effects, but if you know already that distance vision at night is very critical to you, you might be happier in a monofocal IOL. Do you have significant astigmatism? So I'll link my astigmatism video here. 
With astigmatism, the cornea is not curved like a basketball because it's more like a football with two different curves. This will distort vision at distance, intermediate, and near. Astigmatism affects you at all distances. And if you have moderate to high astigmatism, you might be happier in a toric IOL. And insurance does not typically fully cover toric lenses. And do you have other eye conditions? If you have vision loss from an eye disease like glaucoma or macular degeneration or another disease, multifocals and extended depth of focus lenses are generally not recommended because these IOL implants allow less light into the eye, they can actually make things worse for people who already have some vision loss. If avoiding glasses altogether is important to you and you do have some existing damage, monovision monofocal IOLs might be a better option for you. I hope that cleared up the differences in intraocular implants possible for use in cataract surgery. Let me know in the comments below what type of implant you received in your cataract surgery and let me know your experience with it so other eye school pupils can learn as well. And if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed, please do that right now and hit the bell so you don't miss notifications. That's going to be it for today's eye school. Class is dismissed. If you've been told your cataracts are ripe or ready, you're... <laughs> okay, let's try that again. <laughs>